So tell me what's going on. You had a little issue with the chain or something? Yeah, so we we did our launch um, and finally got the launch to work nicely. Uh, we, we were in first gear for like 150, maybe 200 meters, shifted into second, and pretty much right away after that, my chain fell off. So I just steered the bike the rest of the way while Bill uh, pedaled his brains out, and we made it work. So. Some seriously tight right. tolerances to obviously. Yeah, it's kind of wide and then narrow, so you have to stretch it around. Okay, Bill, go ahead. Tell us about it. Um, so, this is a tandem speed bike. So, we have two riders. Uh, they are back to back. The front rider sits in this position and looks this way. And me, the back rider, sits in this position and looks this way. And uh, our drivetrains are on the opposite ends, respectively. We have a seat that is the mid plane of the bike over here. Uh, as you can see, we use a camera system in order to provide vision. So, we have two redundant screens in the front a digital and analog display, and another uh, redundant digital display in the back. The displays, which aren't on right now, provide OSD or on-screen display. So that is uh, sensor data. So we have uh, speed, power, uh, carbon dioxide, uh, brake temperature, uh, GPS distance, a bunch of parameters that might be useful to the rider. Bill, I have a question here for you. So uh, we've talked a bit on the show about the display. That's all that the driver sees going down the road. You, as a co-pilot, have your own display. Not only do you not see out, you have your own display and you're sitting backwards. Mm -hmm. So you're seeing what the camera sees going forward and you're sitting backwards looking at that display. That's correct. Okay, but you're not steering, so I guess. Uh, no, the purpose of me seeing forwards is so I can see the mile markers and I can see the condition of the bike so that I can decide whether to sprint and uh, like how smoothly the power needs to be applied. That's the most important decision I need to make. And so that brings up like communication. Like, so how much communication goes on between the two riders? Yell at each other. Yeah, it's it's loud inside the bike, but our heads are like our helmets are touching back to back. So if if I yell, Bill can hear me, and if Bill yells, I can hear him. Right. No arguments go on there, right? Uh, not yet. So the drivetrains are almost identical. We've got a two-stage um, off-the-shelf drivetrain. The only custom component really is the uh, the chainring. It's a 93-tooth chainring, and then we've got a stand like an off-the-shelf mountain bike cassette. On the front, I can only use the first seven gears. Um, then the the shifter is out of range. We don't have clearance for it. The second stage is just a, a single speed transmission, uh, 40, 42 teeth down to a, an 18 tooth drive sprocket on the wheel. It's just got a simple little uh, idler to tension the, the chain there. And that's about all there is. The only difference between the front and the rear is that the second stage on the rear does a figure eight so that Bill can pedal forwards from his perspective and it drives the bike you point the camera overall forward. Over this yeah, you can actually you can see it through the gap there. Uh, right, let's take a look at the rear here. You right. see here, if I like back, back drive the wheel a little bit, you can see the chain crosses itself uh, through an either, and there's about a 1.5 millimeter gap between this chain and this chain, so they don't actually rub each other. Uh, let's talk about the steering. <laughs> No, yeah. We have like a clearance of like nothing. How, how, yeah, so, tell us about that. So speed bikes in general have very little steering clearance. Uh, it allows you to keep the front really compact, keep the overall shape as aerodynamic as possible. We've taken that to the absolute limit on this bike. Um, as far as we know, this bike has the least steering angle of any speed bike. Uh, where if everything's properly aligned, we have 1.1 degrees in either direction. It's uh, it's pretty crazy. So. A lot of that actually comes down to the skill of our, our launcher uh, being able to balance the bike pretty much perfect right from the start so that I can take it over and really I, I can't steer the bike below 25 or 30 kilometers per hour. And so it's kind of, we, we take it on faith at the, at the start that it's going to be a good line. Um, we come in pretty fast as far as speed bikes go and then brake really hard at the end so we spend as little time as possible in that dead zone where we don't have control authority. How many people need to be to catch uh, this, this big bike? If we're on a good line and there's not too much wind, one person to catch is, is quite all right. 
Um, but it also depends on how familiar that person is with the bike. If you grab the bike and you start pushing it around, it's like when it's fully loaded with both of us in it, it's over 200 kilos. So nobody's going to keep that from falling over on their own. What's your name? Uh, Savo. Savo? Okay, go ahead. Uh, so on the bike, we have three discrete, uh, completely independently operating camera systems. So the two main ones I've powered on right now are run by Raspberry Pis. So they take in a digital camera feed, which I have right now installed. Uh, it runs through the Raspberry Pi, it collects data from a microcontroller, which it overlays. So for example, right now, uh, we can see that the brake discs and uh, temperature sensors are a little malfunctioning. Let me restart that. Microcontroller on the board here collects all the data and puts it on the screen. So uh, the front rider and the rear rider have different amounts of information. So Calvin, since he's doing the steering, he wanted basically just the bare minimum. Whereas Bill riding in the back, he was wanted some more information shown on screen. So we monitor the, mo the obvious stuff, so speed and distance to the end. Yeah. Uh, so we have a sensor on the rear wheel um, if you come around, I can point it out to you. So this sensor here uh, monitors the the wheel's rotation and the brake disc sensor. I think if I can spin the wheel slightly, we should be able to see. Yeah, so that's it, like, picking up us, the spokes on the brake disc. And that's how we monitor speed one way and distance. We also have a GPS backup uh, in case uh, that sensor is unreliable for both uh, distance and speed, um, which is shown on the screen, you can see both values there. On top of that, we collect uh, power data from uh, and power pedals, and also heart rate data. And uh, did you design the tech on this? Uh, it's based on earlier work, but this this new system is basically all redone from scratch. Since I was the last system had some issues with uh, reliability. Okay. So this one's much more reliable. So if the on-screen display, for example, fails to work, the camera still works independently. So we've actually had, uh, right now, to be entirely honest, we've had some issues with the rear on-screen display, like the overlay, but the camera still works for Bill. So it's a redundant system. And they also have each indep independent power supply. So if one goes down, the others still operate. Calvin actually has a second system that isn't like a Raspberry Pi based one. That's just a basic, almost like a security camera feeding directly to a monitor. So it's very simple and that's our ultimate backup. Right. Uh, that's unpowered right now since the battery is charging and the camera's not installed. How about the structure? How about the skeleton here? Can you tell yeah. us a little about that? Yeah, so the, the structure is a hollow carbon fiber frame. It's It was molded in about 20 different pieces and then kind of assembled like a big jigsaw puzzle. It's designed to provide a lot of protection for the riders, but also to, to keep the wheels as stiff as possible relative to each other for good stability at high speed. Like In addition to that, the, the shell is also structural. It doesn't really support any of the mechanical elements of the bike, but it's kind of the the first line of defense for crash protection. Okay, that sounds great. So finally, what are your hopes for this week then, Kelvin? What do you what do you hope to accomplish? Well, I mean, first and foremost, we want to break our, our own world speed record for the tandem category. So that's which uh, was 74 miles an hour. I I think we have a, a pretty decent shot of bumping that up um, past 80. And beyond that, we'll see. Like this bike was designed and in, intended to go pretty incredibly fast, um, but you know, one step at a time. All right. Thank you so much for your time, and good luck to you guys. So, Thanks so appreciate much. it. Okay. Great. Well done. Beautiful. Well done. Beautiful. Beautiful. Nice. Right. Are you able to get the latches off? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. We're all yeah. pushing against each other. Yeah. Um, yeah. My bike. You got it? You got it? Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll take it off later. Okay. They can get out of that one? Yeah, they can okay. get out. Like, all right. Let's like, say someone just go either side of the nose yeah, and hold yeah. it. Because we're just pushing against each other. Hold on, Bill. Good one, Bill. Hold on, Bill. I have a step stool here if you want it, it's but fine. no worries. It's fine. How was it? Well, um, Bill lost the chain even earlier than I did. Next oh, bike is just man. about through. So that was my five mile run. Yes. Okay, let's get this bike off. The next bike is yeah. right here. Need a catch team. We Catching wall. We have to catch Adam. Yeah. Uh, well, someone has the front. I got here. I got side. Get it off the side, Jim. Yeah.